Jolting the Accidental Author, and I'm very excited to be coming at you today because we've got a new fabulous author um, that I'm going to be interviewing today, and this wonderful lady is, well, I'm in Melbourne, Australia. She's all the way in Johannesburg, South Africa, and um, so it's wonderful to talk to her and to, to find out about her first book that she's just recently published and that's very very exciting so i want to welcome leonie brewer for all the way from johannesburg south africa hi leonie hi there andrew thank you very much for having me on your um interview for You're interviewing me very um, excited about that You're and welcome. um yeah thanks Your absolute pleasure now um there's obviously technology is not We've, we've got a little bit of freezing on the screen, so we're going to just go with that. We can hear you talk. You're just freezing. Sure. A little bit. So, um, but that's okay. So, Leone, you have just published your first book called On Divorce Row, which is very, very exciting. Now, have you got the book there so you can sort of hold it up and, and show people? Yeah. Here it goes. And um, the bottom... Redemption, recovery, restoration. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, I guess the first, the first thing I want to say to you is congratulations, and just ask you, how does it feel? You know, because you know, there's something, there's one thing about having this idea to write a book and going through the journey, and and there's often times in the process, if you're like me, and most people, you felt like giving up, but when you finally hold that book in your hand and you smell the pages, tell us how it feels. Um. It took seven years to get there, wow. so it, it was quite a journey. But um, when I held it up and my daughter said on Facebook, my mom's an author, I was blown away. And I thought, you know what, from today my life has changed. I'm not going to be the same person again. Um, and I felt amazing. I really did. Wonderful. Okay. So congratulations. That is a I wonderful really did. I awesome. true, I great sense of achievement. So, yeah. It is true, isn't it? You're not the same person. You, you think no. the second you hold, open that box and pull out that first book, there's that amazing mm. feeling and, and you know that things will, will change forever. So let's talk a little bit about the, what, the book on Divorce Road. So obviously it sounds like there's something to do with divorce in it. Um, see, I'm yeah. pretty cluey like that. I'm very switched on and, and adept at picking up those things. So tell me, Leonie, why? Why did you write the book? What inspired you to write this book? And what inspired you to hang in there for seven years to get it published? Um, I think the, the, the most um, important um, inspiration for me was that I had journeyed through two divorces. Um, and divorce is never your dream. Um, your dream is to be happily married and to live like that, um, you know, until death do you part. And so that was my dream. And it never happened and it was a painful journey. And I wanted others to know that um, I understand your pain and your turmoil. Um, and also to understand, though, that there is hope. Um, there is hope for, for people that are going through this divorce. And um, if you've been through the divorce, if you are currently in a crisis, there is hope. Um, but the journey, I, I want people to understand, to know that I understand what that journey is that they've gone through and that their, um, you know, their turmoil about what to do and which road to take now um, yeah. is something that I really do understand. Wonderful. And now, I see, um, yep. I, um, before we started the interview, <laughs> and you mentioned that you're, you're about to speak at a women's conference and there's going to be 500 women there and... and you know, clueless me said, okay, so hopefully they're all divorced because that's your market. And you told me, no, that's not the market, mm -hmm. which is interesting. So, so it's telling me that you've written a, a book called On Divorce Row, but really it's not just for people divorced or going through divorce. Tell us no. what the book for. Well, you know, I paralleled the title to On, Divor on uh, Death Row. 
And you know, when you're on death row, you're sitting and waiting um, for the day that you're going to die. And I think a lot of us um, are on that journey of divorce. We are waiting for something better to happen in our lives. Um, we're looking over our shoulder. Did we marry the right person? Um, if we did, why do we feel the way we feel? Why are things, uh, why can we not communicate? Why is there so much tension and conflict and strife in our lives? And you know what? I don't, I don't want this. I, I would rather have peace in my life. And um, so, so the journey uh, for me, my life was always about I'm not happy. And, um, and I'm just going to wait for the right moment um, before I, I leave this marriage and um, go into something better, happier, that's going to fulfill me. And you know what? Uh, that doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. <laughs> um, yeah, I've learned that because um, I did get divorced the first time. And then I went into another relationship hoping that that would fulfill me. And um, it didn't. And I got divorced again. And then I went into a third marriage, which I'm still in. And um, that didn't fulfill me either. I love my husband. I love my, my, uh, my husband to, to pieces. But um, women in general tend to look at that man as their completeness. And they are not. They never will be, and there isn't a person on earth that is going to fulfill you the way you want to be fulfilled. So the expectations were uh, totally unrealistic, um, and my perception of what marriage should be uh, was also very warped. So, um, yeah, it's not just for, for people that have got divorced or um, are going through divorce it's not for divorced people. Um, it's really about relationships. It's about yourself as a person, your self-worth, your identity, who you think you are, um, and why you have those such in-depth feelings about um, somebody else fulfilling you. Why do we have that? Why do we feel that? Why do we want that? Yeah. So yeah, it's not just for people that are divorced or going through a divorce. Wonderful, and, um, and that, yeah. and you know what that is, that is, and it's the whole um you know in a relationship, I I've been through uh, divorce as well, and now happily married, okay. and and I totally get what you're saying. You know, like any marriage, it's always exciting and new and fresh, and we go into it with these wonderful expectations of you know of it being blissfully happy forever you know and we, until we yes. happily ever after but the reality yes. is that life happens and scenarios happen and everyone's different and everyone thinks differently and everyone expects different things and and if we're expecting our happiness to come from another person obviously we're setting ourselves up for failure so what you're basically saying is you're in the book you're teaching people to find that joy and that peace in themselves um and yes. to, and and to to be the person to complete the relationship, not wait for someone else to do it. Is that a bit what you're saying? That's, that's quite, yeah, that's quite accurate. That's quite accurate. Um, you're not going to, you know, if you're going to um, look to somebody else to fulfill, look to a person or, or a, um, you know, or your work or your child or your career or whatever, your achievements. Um, if you're going to look to those things, to fulfill you and satisfy you and give you your worth, you are setting yourself up for failure and for a lot of disappointment. And, you know, disappointment comes from, from putting your hopes in the wrong places. So I suffered a lot of disappointment because I never knew um, that my hope should have been um, in the right place, yeah. and it wasn't. So, yeah. where, okay, so where, where did the penny drop for you? At what point did the penny drop? Well, I searched and searched, you know, um, I realized many, many years later that one of the reasons why I was always searching for this love and acceptance and worth and value was because I'm an abortion survivor. And um, I never wow. knew that. But, yeah. That is survived so, abortion. Yeah. 
So <laughs> you're a, you're a, not just a miracle. You're an incredible miracle. Yeah, you're a miracle I am. Of miracles. Yes, I am. I am. And you know, it, it's. I mean, my mom has passed away um, nearly three years ago. But I mean, it was. You know, once I knew. Um, uh, you know, knew why. I, I never held it against her. I mean, her and I had the most awesome relationship and I have no regrets in my life about her at all. And um, I loved her very, very much. We had a super relationship. But I am an abortion survivor and it did cause a huge lot of rejection in my life. And rejection is a very, it's a very powerful spirit. It really is. And it's, you always um, trying to please people. You become a people pleaser. And um, who knows? You know, that, that, that doesn't work. The more you please people, the more you've got to please people. And eventually it's a burnout situation. Yeah, vicious um, cycle. Yeah, it is. So, um, so rejection, uh, for me, I was always, search because of rejection, I was always searching for value and for love um, and for somebody to accept who I was. Um, and, yeah, that only happened when I met... Um, met God in my life, and um, he changed my life. And, you know, I was speaking at a, at a woman's engagement, um, at a woman's function, and I was telling them my story, and I said, you know, I met this guy, and then I married him, and then I went out with a whole lot of other guys, and then I got divorced, and then I met another guy, and I got married to him, and I, I, then I got divorced, and I went out with a whole lot of other guys, and then I met my husband, and uh, we also had a whole lot of baggage together, and then I met my saviour and she said, oh, I'm so glad that that didn't go on and on and on. So, um, yeah, so once I, and my life didn't change overnight. Um, it certainly didn't, but I did. Yeah. I did. My life didn't change and, and, my, and things didn't go away the same day. And, but um, I changed. Yeah. And I've been growing and changing and growing and changing over the last 20 years. Wow. And, um, and there's a really powerful, yeah, there's a powerful yeah. message there, isn't there, that, yeah. you know, change is not, you know, we want, we all want things to change in our life. We want the marriage to be happy. We mm -hmm. want the bank to be full. Mm -hmm. We want to be healthy. We want all these things just to magically happen. But mm -hmm. the first, the first change is that decision, that acceptance of, okay, I'm doing something wrong. I need to make some changes. And then, yes. Then yeah. there'll be a there'll be a delay before things actually start changing in life, and it's a process, mm -hmm. isn't it? It's one day. It is a process, and, you know, uh, and it's an ongoing, ongoing process. Yes, my well, husband, you know if my husband <clears throat> was in the interview with us now, he would uh, tell you exactly the same thing. Um, uh, we have weathered many storms, and um, if it wasn't for uh, God in our lives, we would not be together. Yeah. Uh, that he will tell you himself. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. That's wonderful. So, Leonie, that sounds like an incredible book that people should get their hands on, but, but you're an amazingly inspiring lady too. So how, if people wanted to contact you, what would, you know, and maybe chat to you or, um, you know, get your help yes. or guidance or maybe they want a book, they, maybe people want to fly you over from South Africa to Australia to speak at a conference or how do people contact you? Well, firstly, that would be a dream come true and a prayer answered. Okay, but, well, there um, we go. Let's put it out there then, shall we? Yes. Let's do that. Okay. It has been one of my, it has been one of um, our prayers, my husband and I, um, for the last seven years, actually. So um, maybe that's the next seven years thing because the book took me seven years. Well, let's, not years, let's not wait seven years, Leonie. Yes, no, let's not wait. No, let's not wait. <laughs> no, let's um, make it one or two years. Let's, yeah. get this, let's put this out there. Let's get God on the job and let's make, okay. let's make this happen, okay? So we'll get okay, Leonie's going to come to Australia and, and inspire couples, not just women, couples. No, yeah. no, definitely not married, just women. Single people, people any at any stage of relationships, I know you can can inspire them. So again, how do how do people contact you? You've got a website, I'm guessing. Yes, I have got a website. It's uh, www.leonie, Leo, L E O, which is my maiden name, Brewer.com. Leonie Leo Brewer.com. 
Um, you can also get me on Facebook, Proverbs 31 Women International. Um, or you can email me, uh, info at leonileobrewer.com. Wonderful. Now, what about the book? People want to buy this book. How do they do that? And that's on Amazon. Um, so you can download it um, uh, as an ebook, a Kindle, and it's also a print book. Okay, so you can buy so, any version of yeah, the book on You can Amazon. buy it. Okay, yeah. beautiful, beautiful. All right. Now, before we finish up this interview, Leanne, I want a pearl of wisdom from you. What, what is giving me, for people watching this that might be going through some turmoil in a relationship or wanting to make sure their relationship is, is happy, that they stay together and make it the, the relationship that, that they've always dreamed of, what would be one piece of advice you'd give them? Putting you on the spot here, aren't I? Uh, yeah. No, no, you're not. You're not. You know, Andrew, I would want to say that it doesn't start. I, I was 42 years old when my life changed. But I spoke at a, a, at, a, um, uh, at a young people's conference the other day. And my closing statement to them was, I wish I had been told what I'm telling you today. And for the next generation, parents and um, marriages, married couples, need to know that their children are so trained up in um, how they are loved and how they are valued and at a young age. Because I wouldn't want anybody to wait until they're 42 62 or 82 to know that they are dearly loved and dearly valued. Wonderful. So I, I, want to, I want to tell the parents that and I want to tell married couples that. For those that have got children, but for those that haven't got children, um, there's a next generation. What would you tell a young person today that you've learned? What would you tell a young person for those couples that don't have children? Mm. What would you tell a young person today? Well, I, I think I would I would back up everything you've said. You know, like you've got to believe, you've got to you've got to value yourself in no matter whether it's about relationships or anything in life. If you don't, yeah. if you don't value yourself, believe in yourself, um, then you know nothing's going to work out. You know, nothing is. The way you nothing is. So, nothing so yeah, I'm 100 percent on board. So I think that's a very powerful message and a wonderful way to finish this. So, Leonie, thank you very much for spending some time with us and telling us about your new book on Divorce Row. And we, and I know it's going to be incredibly successful. And I can thank see you. you standing on stages all around the world inspiring people with your message. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you so much. And I'm open to any invitation of any listener today. Uh, whether you're in Australia or you are in Zimbabwe, they need us at the moment, wherever you are in the world. Thank you very much for listening and thank you, Andrew, for the opportunity. You're welcome. Good on you, Leonie. See you soon. Thank you. God bless. Bye.